Comic Station, issue number 7 for February 13, 2013. I am Paul Nisi. And I'm Scott Cage of the Comic Station. For you that have been watching, we are going to change up the format a little bit with the reviews, but don't worry, we have a number of new releases that I'm sure a lot of people are looking at, and you might be interested to hear what we have to say first before you buy anything. Alright, thank you, and welcome to Comic Station. Welcome to the new releases for February 13th, 2013. We're going to kick off right with a big one. A lot of people, if you haven't been reading with the series, some people may be interested in jumping in on this one. It is The Walking Dead, the Governor Special. Uh, this is from Image Comics, of course. This is a number one. Uh, this promises to basically tell the story of the Governor. If you saw the intro, I warned you a little bit. Basically, it's applying to this one here. Uh, the first three pages or so is new. It's added. You get a little bit more of an insight into the governor uh, before Rick and everybody meets him. But then after that, it's the same thing from the actual comics. If you've been reading the comics and keeping up with them, I personally had the compendium. It's rehashing everything again. And once you get past those first three pages, it's, you've already read it. You already know it. Granted, the next few issues they could go into a little bit more, and what we're all looking for more is insight into the governor, but this is disappointing. Uh, it wasn't what I was looking for. Uh, that's, I mean, there's not much else here. It's a rehash of the comic, so if you've already read it, you've read it already. There's no point in getting this. Yeah, I, I think that if you're going to, if you're curious about the governor, there's two books that go along with the series. One is The Road to Woodbury. And the other one is, um, I'm going to find. Um, uh, the governor, there was one on the governor. Yeah, the rise well, of the governor. Rise of the that's governor. That's it. Um, I think that would be money better spent. Now, it's a huge difference. Obviously, it's two ninety nine for a comic as opposed to 24 bucks for a book. But um, if, if you're looking for the you. actual insight that you were hoping for in this, get the, either one of those two books is much more recommended and Honestly, it's a little bit more, but it's going to give you what you want, and this just isn't. Absolutely. Yeah, it's good for the collection. If you're collecting it, fine. Get it. Stick it away. Yep. All right, we're going to jump right into the next one, which is from Icon Publishers, uh, Powers Bureau, number one. Uh, first thing off the first page, very dense talking. Uh, lots of text. There, this follows uh, Agent Pilgrim who is an agency of the FBI is set up to hunt down what are powers, basically somebody that exhibits uh, different abilities. There are different levels you learn, and then some of them are more offensive or not. And it, for the most part, they don't bother them. They only go after them once they start becoming a threat. But this one really centers around Agent Pilgrim, her history with some powers, and why she is basically a really good hunter of them. A lot of time hopping in this one, though. You get an intro, then it's uh, three days later, and then in, spurs in between is more background on uh, Agent Pilgrim, which is five years ago. And a bunch of that kind of threw me off a little bit. The artwork was really nice, though. Uh, clean and well-drawn. Uh, I mean, j nothing terribly spectacular. Uh, interesting concepts, so I'm wondering if they're going to go further with it. The first issue really just set up more of Agent Pilgrim and her background. I uh, do have to give a little bit of warning. There are some, not much, and I don't consider it much, but parents will want to know that there are some dirty topics within this comic. Uh, so I would recommend if your kids are interested in this co comic, read it over first and make sure you're okay with the subject. Really, it's one subject, but parents will want to look at this and it's a good thing to read it first. The um, icons uh, out the Marvel group. My, Michael Brian Michael Bendis is writing it, so it's kind of a creator-owned uh, title. Uh, I have not read it yet, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, Bendis can go either way with me, so I'm curious. Yeah, it's a very dense book. I like the see. I like the ideas behind it, um, but there was a lot of setup, which is okay for an issue number one. I would, but a lot of times you have to grab the reader on the first issue, and this one kind of grabbed me, but not quite. So, we'll have to see on next issues. Another number one. Some people may be familiar from uh, her jaunt on the uh, Justice League of America, but it is Katana number one. 
Uh, first thing, right off the bat, amazing artwork. I don't know what's been going on. Like, may maybe I missed something, but, like, DC has been amazing on artwork so far. And on a previous one, uh, Injustice, which you mentioned before, even on their second and third tier comics, their artwork is great. Uh, this has... It's Katana. It's uh, a woman that has a sword. Uh, her name is Tatsu Toro. Uh, she's basically avenging her husband. She has a sword called the Soul Taker. That when she kills somebody, it sucks in the soul, and it, the soul inhabits the sword. The sword has its own bloodlust. Uh, there's some storyline and some uh, mechanics in that later, but the artwork definitely has an inspiration from the manga. Uh, it's beautifully drawn. It, anyone that likes manga, especially colored artwork from the manga, will appreciate the lines and just the color work and uh, the way it, everything flows. Beautiful artwork. A lot of interest on her. She's really training hard. She's working, and you get a, she's hunting down the husband's killer. The only downside, really, I saw from it is there's a lot of setup and. As beautiful as the artwork was, when it finally came to the a fight scene at the end, I was a little under, not impressed, honestly, under, underwhelmed. Um, the fight scene was beautiful, but it looked like pictures more than movement. Um, I mean, there were movement lines on there, but it just didn't flow. It just, just didn't have that action scene to it that I was looking for, especially with something of this genre. So while the pic while they were beautiful fight scenes. They weren't action. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, DC, once again, has chosen a second, if not third tier character to launch uh, a book with. I'm not sure she can carry a book for a long period of time. I thought she was good. Um, in She was in The Birds of Prey. Um, and as a bit character, I think she's fine. I um, mm -hmm. like the character. I'm just, I, I, I question some of the choices that DC has made in the past year and a half with, you know, the releases that they're putting out with some of these characters. I understand they're trying to broaden the horizons a little bit, maybe make a few extra dollars, but these titles generally go four, five, six issues, sales are down, they get canceled. So we'll see. I, I mean, you, you hope for the best, but I'm, I don't think this is a title that's going to last long. Yeah, I could definitely see that this could be a l lower issue number. Um, Hopefully DC is planning for that and has some contingency plans or something because I think, as you said, this could be a really good 5, 6, maybe even 10 issue comic, but I don't see the staying power as well unless they really add in some new things to it. Um, I did hear some insight to this. Some people were wondering whether this was going to be in the possible JLA movie and that's why they were doing it, uh, that she might have some part. There was some rumors going around, but those are all rumors and nobody ever knows anything. Not until you see it, so. <laughs> all right. And the last one here, actually second to the last one, I'm also going to mention, I uh, don't have it on me, but Todd the Ugliest Kid on Earth, do want to give a little, uh, number two, it's uh, issue number two, we talked about this I believe on Comic Station issue number three, uh, really interesting idea, kid with paper bag over his head, he's too ugly to be seen, uh, gets picked on a lot, bad situations. This continues from there, and in all honesty, the first one was interesting and they grabbed my attention, the second one seems to have stalled already in the second issue, so people that like the first one or are interested in the first one might want to pick up and try out number two before they purchase it. It, The, the uniqueness of the idea kind of went stale quickly. Um, unless they can really ratchet it up, which looks like there's going to be some action in the third one, so I don't know, they could redeem it, but the interesting idea so far is only carrying it so far. Uh, the final issue for the new releases is, you had to have guessed this one, Star Wars number 2 by Brian Wood. Again, fantastic art. Leia is showing some leadership here, she's setting up her team from the first issue, Beautiful, well written. You get more of Han Solo. Unfortunately, there's no real Vader this time. You do see more of the captain that has replaced him taking over the ship. Uh, but my God, this is amazing. This is beautiful. This is. I. 
I know Dark Horse, unfortunately, is losing the rights to Star Wars, to Marvel, since Disney bought that, and they have a partnership. And if Marvel doesn't pick this up and continue it, and, in my opinion, pick up this team, it's a real shame. This has been amazing. I would, If this was a movie, I would watch it over and over again. This is one of those you can you can enjoy more than one time and it's amazing and that's basically it. I mean it's number one and they didn't drop a beat. Mm -hmm. That's Brian Wood. I I think if you take a look in the past couple of years, Brian Wood doesn't get the notoriety that some of the other writers do, but for my money he has probably written probably two out of the top five things I've read in the past two years. I mean it, he's really, really Great. I mean, I just I appreciate everything he's written so far. Yeah, I know uh, Dark Horse has a lot of Star Wars series, a lot of different uh, lines going on, but this one really stands out among them. And if you're a Star Wars fan, you should pick this up, especially while you can, not knowing the future of this series. Uh, can't recommend it enough to a fan of Star Wars. All right, uh, we're gonna have a change up in some of the reviews and another recommendation following this. For this issue of the Comic Station, uh, we actually are changing up the review a little bit. There are two reviews currently live on FrontTowardsGamer.com that you can find, and we'll be going over an excerpt from both of them. Shorter excerpts, but for two comics. So the first one is Emily and the Strangers number one. This is from Dark Horse Comics, and basically, if you're not familiar, this continues the story of Emily the Strange. Uh, this was originally a basically a mascot for a clothing company. Emily is a mad scientist girl that is very witty, very charming, but she's a little crazy. By a little I mean a lot. She has four cats who are her main companions and they exhibit a lot of actual brains when they want to, when they're not causing her trouble and screwing up her experiments, but also they do help her in strange ways. Basically, it opens up with the idea that she has too many ideas. She doesn't know what to do. And through a fluke of her cats pushing it forward, she hears a radio ad for a uh, contest to win the guitar. This is a haunted guitar from a basically a mad scientist musician that she enjoys. So, of course, she's stuck on this idea and she wants it. And she gets more than she bargains for when she meets Evan, who not only tells her that in order to fully win the guitar she has to enter a battle of the bands but also sets himself up as her partner. It's interesting because as smart and as witty she is he seems to be a perfect match it's really cute but the standout in this comic is absolutely the art. Emily Ive is the artist here. Amazing job. If anything else the artwork in here really pushes it forward. It's beautiful. She does a great job of almost a sepia tone look of black and white with shades in between, but with hints of color. And the color really draw your eyes to points of interest. When at one pa point there is a page with a lot of color, and you know that what's being shown in there is going to be of great importance. So she does a great job of balancing the black and white because it is more of a gothic view but uses the color and amazing drawings to bring your eyes to where she wants you to look at them and that really made this comic and honestly Emily Ives artwork here is what really made me give in addition to the witty comments and witty uh, writing a 9 out of 10 I thought it was amazing I really like it I'm not familiar with the Emily the Strange, but I'm going to keep up with this one. The second is actually second review we have is actually a submission by a contributor on Front Towards Gamer. If you want to be a contributor, you can check the site we have if you want to help write. And this is from contributor Chaz King. This is Son of Merlin, number one. This is from Top Cow. From image and basically it follows the story Merlin it opens up with Merlin and his assistant Gwen running from Morgana and he is forced to 
give Glenn his diary, which is his vessel of power, and send her to find his illegitimate son. His illegitimate son, though, happens to be a professor at MIT. As Chaz says in his review, the story of Son of Merlin so far has left me wanting more. I'm a sucker for urban fantasy, and I'm really excited to see where the writer is going with this. I don't know what else to say. He, he liked the writing, and it got him sucked in. Uh, the artwork has a beautiful, almost realistic, but with a twinge of anime style to it. Uh, the artwork is very clean and detailed. But he questions whether that is because this is a first issue and the artist had a lot of time and effort to put into this. And he wants to see if they can continue that crisp, clean look of the artwork in further issues. Son of Merlin's story seems to be headed in a unique and fun direction. Can this scientist learn terms with something that he can't understand? Can he come to terms with something he can't understand? That's an interesting topic. He's a very smart, almost egotistical MIT professor. So can he learn to accept something he can't understand? It's an interesting topic. So, unfortunately, that's very nice. But unfortunately, with the artwork, going back to that again, the does a he called out particularly the poor portrayal of motion in the fighting scenes being anticlimactic. Uh, the color is good, but it doesn't quite make up for it. Um, he ends his review, and I think it's very fitting, so I'm going to read it from his review. I think he says it well. The first issues have quite a hurdle to jump in terms of grabbing the reader's attention. Though it has a few hiccups, Son of Merlin has done a world wonderful job of making me care more about what happens next. It will be interesting to see if they can fix some of the problems that it had within in later issues. A good art mixed with a fantastic story premise definitely makes Son of Merlin one to watch out for. From his review, he sounds like he gave a really good uh, overview of it. It sounds something you're interested in. Uh, he seems to like it. He likes the artwork is beautiful, but not action. Uh, really good premise. But we'll see what happens with issue number two. He gave it a 7 out of 10, which is a good. So, again, if you're if this sounds interesting, check it out. Okay, now, for my, re my recommendation, we're going to look at the new Uncanny X-Men number one from Marvel. Now, this is the flagship book of the X-Men. Um, ended last year after another restart. And the reason I'm bringing this up this week is because I'd like to see where they take this. Um, the writing so far has been was decent. Uh, it, it basically it picks up where Avengers vs. X-Men ended um, with Scott Summers as the antagonist as has been the case now in most of the new X-Men books and you're basically getting a, a story of how his powers are kind of not in his control. He still has them but he cannot really control his powers and there's a so another person who is describing a bunch of things to Maria Hill of S.H.I.E.L.D. So I don't want to spoil that, but I'm going to give it a shot because to me this is the X-Men book. Um, I had given up on the X-Men. There was too many X titles out there for me, and it had, was driving me crazy. So for me, this is the X book that I'm hoping will really you know, come through, and I will read as a regular X-Men book. It's yet to be seen. Um, I'm a little disappointed with some of the artwork in it, but I will give it another shot, and I hope that so you know everybody out there will, because this is the book that should carry the X-Men forward. So pick it up. For me, if I was going to grade it, I'd probably give it a seven out of ten as well. Writing was decent. Um, artwork left a little bit to be desired by my for my taste, but it is you know it, it's readable. So. Um, just have to wait and see what number two does. Yeah, I always like being a child of the late 80s, early 90s. I always liked the X-Men from the television show. So anything that can bring that world back is always welcome, in my opinion. And as you've seen on previous issues, big Wolverine fan. So that's where it all got its start. And this for me is, you know, and I'm a child of the 60s slash 70s. So, um, you know, growing up, 
it was the Uncanny X-Men. That's, you know, this is a... It's, I shouldn't really say it's an attempt to get back to those because it is different um, in a lot of different ways. And, and in certain respects, the all-new X-Men is more like the old Uncanny X-Men was. So what we have to really, you know, I don't know which way that they're going to take this. I can only keep my fingers crossed and hope that the continuity stays and, and it just it, it flows out from here. It's real, really early to tell, but that's why I'm, I'm going to re recommend it, read it. You know what, get back to us, let me know what you think. Uh, I, I, like I said, I thought the, re the writing was good, art, eh, but it's worth a shot. Yeah. As Scott said, we uh, always feel welcome to leave some comments below. We'll hopefully get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, feel free to let us know. Did you read any of these? Did you read any of the new releases? Let us know your opinion. If you'd like to hear uh, some topics and maybe have us review or highlight a comic that you haven't seen on the comic station, let us know. We'll be happy to do so. You can always get me on Twitter, at PNC, uh, the comic station, and you can always check fronttowardsgamer.com is where I post my reviews and these articles to go along with the videos. Or you can always check the comic station on YouTube as well. We all... Front Towards Gamer also has it on our YouTube. If you're not watching it, there already. Alright. Feel free to check in every week. Let, again, let us know what you think. Let us know if there's anything you're missing and you want us to look at. Alright. Thank you for watching the comic station.